Hey Maker, welcome to the Snapseed Photo Editing for Product Photography 6 video series. This is video 1. Snapseed is my favorite editing app to share with non-photographer makers. Not only is it free, it has amazing pro tools and features. Quick disclaimer though, Snapseed is an app available on smartphones and tablets. You cannot directly download Snapseed to your Mac or your PC. However, if you want to use Snapseed on your computer, you can do so with an Android emulator. In the past, I have tested this option by downloading the Android emulator called BlueStacks. While I didn't have any problems with the software running properly, I have had a lot of makers come to me and say that it's just super glitchy, especially with older computers. So if you prefer to edit on your computer, Snapseed is probably not the way to go and this series is not for you. However, this series is for you if you're a maker and you have to photograph and edit your own product photos. It's for you if you take your product photos on your smartphone and you want to also edit on your smartphone to keep your product photography workflow in one place. And this video series is for you if you are looking for a free editing solution. And when I say free, I mean completely free. And it pretty much does it all. If you are ready to learn the ins and outs of the Snapseed photo editing app, this series is for you. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Christina Nicole, and I am a product photography coach teaching makers like you how to take your own high quality product photos that actually attract more customers and make more sales for your product based business. In this video, video one, I will teach you how to get started with Snapseed by learning the basic editing tools for beginners. Let's go. Now, before I dive in, quick disclaimer, I am an iPhone user. So that is the example you will see in this series. No worries though, if you're an Android user because Snapseed functions exactly the same on iOS and Android devices, except when it comes to exporting the photo, which we'll cover in video five of this series. So all you have to do is go to your app store and type in Snapseed into the search. And this is what it looks like. You're gonna go ahead and download and install it on your device. Keep in mind, it is free and there are not upgrade options within the app. So you have access to all of the tools and features for free. Once you open the app, you're gonna see a plus sign and it's gonna say tap anywhere to open a photo. Select the photo you want and it'll open inside of Snapseed. Then you're gonna to click tools at the bottom. And the first tool we're gonna look at is Tune Image. Inside of Tune Image, you are going to swipe vertically on the image to access the edit menu. Once an option has been selected, you are gonna swipe horizontally to enhance. If we go right, it's gonna increase the brightness. If we go left, it's going to decrease the brightness. So brightness darkens or lightens the entire image. I typically go where it looks good and then I take it down a couple notches. If we swipe vertically, we'll go to contrast next. So contrast is going to increase or decrease the overall contrast of the image. So in photography, contrast means difference. Low contrast photos have similar tones, while high contrast photos have a wide range from the lightest to the darkest tones. If we go right, that's going to increase our contrast. And if we go left, going to decrease our contrast. So I just recommend getting in here and kind of playing with everything. Next is gonna be saturation. So saturation is going to add or remove vibrancy to the colors in the image. So if we go right, they're gonna get more vibrant. Look how saturated the wood looks. If we go left, we're gonna lose vibrancy in the colors. So what I'm focusing on here is the wood. I want the wood to look nice and rich and just nice and warm. 
Next is ambience. So ambience is like a twist on contrast and it adjusts the balance of light in the entire image. Just go in and play. You see to the left, it's getting a little darker. To the right, it's getting a lot brighter. I don't typically play with ambience. So I'm going to leave that at a zero. Next is going to be highlights. So highlights, you can darken or you can lighten only the highlights in the image. Highlights are typically the brighter portions. So we're going to increase or decrease the highlights. Next are the shadows. So again, you can darken or lighten only the shadows in the image. So this is going to lighten the shadows. This is going to darken the shadows. For an image like this that has a lot of darker tones, we may want to bring the shadows down a little bit to just kind of keep that moody look. And last is going to be warmth. So warmth adds a warm or cool color cast to the entire image. So we go right, it gets super warm. We go left, it gets super cool. This is kind of similar to temperature, which we'll cover here in a bit. Anytime you're using something that's altering the overall color temperature of your image, you want to make sure that your product stays true to color. So once we made the adjustments we want, we can hold down on the image and see what the original looked like. Once we release our finger, it's going to show us our edits. So you can kind of hold it down and let go just to toggle back and forth and see how the new edits look. You can also click this slider button at the bottom and it'll pull up the edit menu and release it. The little wand looking thing to the right of the slider, that's going to be for auto adjustments. I don't recommend touching auto adjustments. So once you have it where you want it, you're going to hit check mark. Then we're going to go back into tools and we're going to look at details. So same concept to access the menu, you're going to swipe vertically on the image. And for this specific tool, we have structure and structure. It increases the amount of detail in the image. So if we go right. It's going to kind of make everything a little more sharp. If we go left, it's going to make everything a little more blurry. I want to be careful with this one because if we go too far to the right, it can kind of look fake. And if we go to the left, it's kind of the same concept. Next, we're going to look at sharpening. So sharpening increases the amount of sharpness in the details of the image. So you only have one slider to the right this way to make the image sharper. You there's really no reason to decrease the overall sharpness of the image. So again, be careful with this. We don't want to exceed too far to where it starts to look fake. A lot of times we want to get that sharpness straight from the camera. Again, in the center at the bottom, you have the sliders that pulls up the edit menu. Toggle that on and off. You can also hold down on the screen to see your adjustments. And once you like what you see, you hit that check mark in the right hand corner. Next, we're going to check out white balance. So white balance is used to balance the colors of an image. So sometimes you may notice that your photos look a little blue or a little yellow. If you swipe vertically, you'll open up the edit menu. And then we're going to swipe, we're going to choose one and swipe left and right to enhance. So temperature is going to be the first one we choose. And temperature to the right is going to take us super warm, almost kind of yellowy. And to the left, it's going to take a super cool, very blue. Most important thing here, again, is to keep your product looking as true to real life as possible when it comes to color. So right now, I'm kind of looking at, I'm focusing on the candle, focusing on the product. And once I start to increase the temperature, I am noticing that the product is looking more true to color as far as the wax versus looking kind of blue there. We increase the temperature a little bit. If we hold down on the screen, we can see the difference. Again, I typically take it to where my eye thinks it looks good and then I drop it a couple because our eyes can play tricks on us. And then I definitely use the hold down method and release to see the previous and then my edits. 
Swipe up. We're going to go to tint. Now, tint's going to focus more on pink or magenta tones. And left is going to be more of those green tones. So this is one you just want to kind of play with to see if you need to make any adjustments. I personally prefer what I'm seeing here as far as color temperature, so I'm not going to be messing with tint here. Down at the bottom in the middle, we've got the edit menu that's going to pop up. We have an auto white balance option. I don't recommend anything auto. You want to keep complete control over your products. And then we also have a dropper to the right, which I also don't recommend. So once you like what you see, you're going to hit that check mark on the right. And the next tool we're going to look at is the rotate tool. Now we can do our best in camera to try to use the grid and get everything as straight as possible. But once you start to swipe horizontal on your actual image on the screen, you'll notice that even more lines pop up. So I'm focusing on the line in within the wood that's right below the actual candle. So if I take this back to a zero, I can get there slowly. Okay, and then I grab this. You'll notice that my line is a little crooked. So I want to level that out as much as possible. Okay, we want all the lines in our photos to be nice and straight, especially the ones that are kind of surrounding our product. We want them to look nice and straight or they just kind of steal focus. The check mark there. Go back into tools and we're gonna play with the perspective tool. So the perspective tool is really cool because sometimes we can kind of get lens distortion when we're using you know, our smartphones. So if you notice in this specific image right now, the lid of the candle looks a little smaller and the base of the candle looks a little larger. So our perspective is just off slightly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my finger down the screen and I'm gonna make this adjustment. If I go this way, now the top looks larger than the bottom, right? So I just wanna adjust this to where the candle looks even kind of throughout as far as size goes. I think this is where normal was. So I think maybe about right here. Now you'll notice on the left and right side of the bottom here, we've got a little bit of black and black. Once I release my finger, it's going to fill in based on the image I have. So it's gonna kind of smart fill in. Now, if you tap in the center here, you'll see that pop up. So we want smart to be selected because that's what it's gonna fill. It's gonna fill in just a similar background where we played with that. You go here, you have the option to adjust other things as well, which we're not gonna really mess with because we already did rotation. And again, there's a magic wand for auto. I don't recommend using anything auto. So once you like what you see, you're just gonna hit that check mark. And those are the basic editing tools for beginners inside of a Snapseed. In video two, you are going to learn how to use Snapseed's Pro Tools for advanced editing. Please take the time to like this video if you found it useful and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you wanna learn more about taking your own high quality product photos. See you next time.